If you're a pleasant, sociable, well-liked kind of person, you might be an earth element type. If you're kind of known as a pleasant, um, relaxed person, easy to be around with, easy to get along with others, supportive, reliable, um, you like having relationships and you like inserting yourself into other people's situations and you're generally um, a trusted friend, um, you might be an earth element type. I'm Marie Hopkinson. Welcome back to the Chinese Medicine Podcast. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about the earth element and what does it mean to be an earth type. So I um, hope you've been enjoying this series so far. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the earth type and what it means to be an earth type of Ch in Chinese medicine personality. Um, now, before we get on with this, um, if you're not familiar with this series so far, I just want to direct your attention to the um, introduction and that will kind of give you a little bit of a... Um, uh, it'll give you an introduction. <laughs> um, it'll give you an introduction into what this series is about and stops me having to repeat myself over and over at the, at the beginning of this. What we're talking about here are personality types or constitutional types of Chinese medicine. I'm focusing more on the mental, emotional, the personality type of functions, the psychological functions of these things rather than the physio physical, the physiological functions or physiological attributes that these types may have. Or most commonly have um, and so you can do the personality test in the link below um, there's a test there's a test link I also mentioned this book um, between heaven and earth this is a book that um, it's called between heaven and earth the guide to Chinese medicine by Harriet Benefield and Ephraim Corngold I'll put the link to that in the description below that's a good one if you're really interested in this if you're a student of Chinese medicine or you're just a person that's wanting to know more then this is really great so what's the earth type all about well they're known as a peacemaker right so they're very good at relationships they're very good at the interpersonal relationships of other people so we're going to talk about it in its natural state or in its healthy state um, what an earth type person would be like and then we're going to talk about it in like a distorted state so like if there wasn't was an insufficient amount of earth for an earth person or an excessive amount of earth for an earth person so these are different out of balance states and what that might look like as well so if you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe make sure you click that notification bell um, that will just make me happy <laughs> and you'll make my day um, and so let's get on with the video so in a natural state um, an earth type person is a nurturing person. So think of the earth itself, right, is a good analogy. The earth nurtures the plants, right? Now, it, it needs other aspects of it as well. And that, that's a good analogy for all these elements. You can't just have sort of one without the other. And earth in balance kind of shows us that it needs like the sun, it needs the fire element, it needs the wood element, um, you know, which would be a drying element, it needs the water element, it needs all those things to kind of make that earth correct or right or supportive, right? But when it is in when it is in balance, it provides support for the plants, it provides support for things to grow. And so in a personality type, you might be that kind of person that you, you might not be necessarily um, a driving force in something, but you, the earth types tend to provide the support and the nourishment for the other types to grow. Now in a relationship, let's say in a partnered relationship, this can be a really powerful combination. You might have a wood type and an earth type or even a water type and an, and an earth type together or something like that. Um, the previous type we just talked about, the fire type and the earth type, are probably more the person, the better at interpersonal skill, like better, more more well known for um, being good with people, right? Um, and the previous type we're talking about, the fire, it's more that bubbly, like that bubbly, sociable kind of thing. Whereas this is more, um, the person probably has a really good read of the room, right? So they're able to go. And they pick up on people's emotions and be and are able to kind of in that nurturing way, um, to say the right things to kind of appease that situation. So they tend to shy away from conflict. These kind of personality types, and in general, are generally like a relaxed type of person. Um, in contrast to like your wood and and water types, and maybe even the metal type, where there's probably a little bit more. Um, decisiveness and um, possible divisiveness by by having a strong will right whereas this the, the earth type of person is more likely to go with the flow and not push their own agenda if that would make you know 
other people are uncomfortable, for instance. Um, so they tend to be a sympathetic type of person, right? These are the kind of people you'd go to if you had a problem and you just wanted someone to listen. You don't necessarily want to get advice, but they're very good listeners and they would probably provide that supportive environment in different ways, right? Some people provide support and, and they might have a strength of like, or oh, knowing that people are sick, so they make meals and they come and help you. Or, you know, they'll just know what is needed to kind of help appease a situation. And that's probably why they're known as that peacemaker type of person. Um, a, they're a considerate person, so um, politically correct, right? And wouldn't put their own needs ahead of um, other people's, like at, at, the, at the expense of other people's discomfort, let's say. So, you know, sometimes you have an opinion and you want to say that opinion, but by saying that opinion, it's probably possibly going to make some people uncomfortable. Now, a wood type of person might not even care what other people think. They're just going to go and, and, and it's a bit rash and it's a bit cutting and, you know, intrusive. Whereas the earth type of person is not like that at all. Probably more withholding of their own personal ideas and thoughts if that were to, you know, not, be a, not, not cause a peaceful situation to occur or maybe put people in discomfort. So they tend to be an agreeable type of person. Um, they tend to be poised, like they'll, they'll sit back and kind of let things play out before they kind of have to feel like they need to interject or something like that. Um, but they're also very attentive people because they are reading the room. They are reading, they are in tune with people's emotions and people's thoughts, um, listening to what they say. What does that mean? What is that person trying to express? That's a very useful um, attribute of the earth element type of person they tend to be a very practical person right so they might um if you're talking about strengths they might have a strength of kindness um or strengths in like i'm talking about the martin seligman happiness um style of strengths um strengths and virtues um i've talked about that before in some psychological stuff on this channel um they're probably the humanities would be a strength for them right like um reaching out with kindness and um you know uh, agreeableness and um, you know reducing the reduction of conflict like I said before the earth type of people tend to be um, uh, like supportive and even their body type can be like that like a supportive a solid structure they're not they're, they're less inclined to be thin and wispy kind of looking people they tend to look they'll tend to look in the physical characteristics more solid um, and dense in terms of like um, you know, a foundational type of structure of, of, you know, like when you build a house, they call it a cornerstone, um, things that, th that, that can be relied upon and things that are stable and, you know, it's not sort of whimsical and changing from day to day. So these kinds of people are pretty steady in a healthy state. They're pretty steady kinds of people. Um, you know, you wouldn't sort of think, oh, I'm, I'm not sure if I could approach them because I wouldn't know what to expect. Um, they'll, they'll be pretty, um, pretty steady and generally like a generous kind of person, um, a kind person um, and uh, the kind of person that lots of people like to be around, like so they're good, good in a social situation. And another aspect of earth in a Chinese medicine sense we think of yi, the intellect, as a main attribute of earth. Right, so everyone has this, whether you're an earth type or not, otherwise it wouldn't exist because you need intellect to kind of get through the day and do what you've got to do. So the, um, this is part of this is like remembering um, and almost like you can imagine these people not remembering people's birthdays and they remember and they will act on that in a kind way um, because they know that's a way to keep the peace. They know that's a way to, um, you know, ensure good relationships um, and to, you know, that's a way for them to kind of express themselves that they're kind of you know rem they would remember dates and things like that so if you're um <laughs> if you've got a partner who's an earth type they probably wouldn't forget your anniversary or specific dates or you know key things that's very important to them in in the grand scheme of things um so i think round about now would be a good time for youtube to show you a commercial um so why don't you stay tuned for that well, I hope you got some value out of that. Um, I hope YouTube showed you a video <laughs> that you were interested in. Um, so let's talk about what happens when an earth type gets is in, is an exaggerated sense. Like there's, there's too much earth going on for its own good, right? So in a distorted way, in, a, in an exaggerated sense, what happens when there's too much earth going on for its own good, right? So instead of being a nurturing person that's kind of looking after people 
and being attentive to people's needs and that kind of thing. They could be over nurturing, right? Like a like a um, a hovering mother or a meddlesome mother-in-law kind of thing, right? Um, so that that's another aspect that can kind of go out of go into exaggeration. Like um, getting involved in people's lives can be useful for, especially an earth element person wants to kind of do that to help them. Now, if it gets out of control, then they can be seen as a meddlesome person. Oh, they're always trying to get into my affairs. They're always trying to get in my, you know, they're always trying to come over or they're always texting me and inserting themselves into my life, into this situation. Um, in a workplace, let's say, um, it could be really overburdensome for an earth person. They might be okay to look after, let's say, or they feel the need, even though those people aren't asking for help, they would feel the need to look after these people that are struggling, let's say. But then if everyone was struggling, they'd still feel the need to look after them and that could be just overburdening them in that way. Um, an earth element type in healthy state is a relaxed person. So that ability to kind of go with the flow and not have to speak up about their own um, opinions, let's say, or their own d drives in an unhealthy state could mean that person doesn't have any drive and they just, you know, they let's say on a board of directors or a board of people, you get these people known as yes men, or yes people, yes women maybe even. So, um, you know, someone who just goes with the flow can actually be really counterproductive to some situations because you want them to kind of speak up. So let's say you're working in a team and a person just never has their own opinion and you're like, I want to know what you think and they're like, oh, I think what you think do you like I'm happy with what you think I'm happy to go where you go and so that could be um it could be counterproductive for that person individually but it could also be frustrating for people around them so let's say you're in a group of friends and you know you go somewhere and and no one wants to choose where you're going for various reasons right there can be lots of reasons why people don't want to do that but in an, an earth element person who's always doing that oh, I'll be happy with what you choose now they might go there and then then you get there and they're like oh but I don't eat meat I'm a vegetarian and you've gone to like ribs and burgers <laughs> and, and you don't and when you get there they're like oh but I don't eat meat and they're not having a good time but they would never have spoken up about that in the first place and so that can in a social situation or in a relationship if that's happening that can be very frustrating to the others around them because they they want to help this person if they would have only spoken up at the start um so this person can also be obviously in a healthy healthy state very sociable right so they tend to have they would thrive in social situations. They would like social interactions. But in a um, in an exaggerated sense, it could just be too. There could be just too many people around, right? So there's a lot of crowding, and um, they never they can never say no. They don't have any boundaries, and that might overwhelm them. So it's like let's say it's a person who's like, oh, just come over if you're not feeling good. Call me anytime. And so then they've got people calling them at all times of the day and night. They've got people coming over. And there's no time for themselves. And that might not necessarily drain them too much, but it could drain others around them. But then the rest of their life might suffer because they can't you know, work on anything important for themselves because they're just surrounded by too many people all the time. Um, an earth type of person is a sympathetic person. Um, and again, this is kind of like the meddlesome thing. In an exaggerated sense, they could get really too involved, right? Like, um, And that could be detrimental for them and other people as well um that agreeable sense um is a, a characteristic of a healthy earth element type of person in an exaggerated sense it's a conforming type so this person's like a good little soldier just doing what they're told um not able to think for themselves as well as they maybe should be um they would it's almost that peace at any price right i'll just you know just for the sake of harmony and getting on with it and I don't, they would shy away from conflict now living in a world of conflict all the time isn't healthy either but having no conflict um, can be very hard to um, then to then to move forward it's like when you have a person an unhealthy earth element type in either in a workplace relationship or in a personal relationship um, a romantic relationship um, if the other person is let's say they're healthy in their, in, within their element and they want that earth element person to be assertive it can just be incredibly hard to get them to even say what they what they really want because they just they're afraid to say that because they don't want the conflict that may come from that right um so they can be, become very worried 
and conforming kind of person. Now worry is a part of the, um, in the five elements, it's the emotion that's associated with earth. So thinking, the yi, the, the intellect, is the healthy part of that, that concept. The unhealthy part of that is worry or pensiveness, right? And pensiveness means like a thought that kind of ruminates around and around. It can be associated with anxiety, so it's people that are anxious a lot. Now, I'm not saying you've got a neurological condition, like that you are an, you've got anxiety. Just the emotion or the idea of feeling anxious can be kind of part of this, but particularly the worry aspects. Like a person that thinks like, oh, I wonder, I hope Johnny's okay today at school, or, you know, something happens on the news that they hear, right? Um, oh, there was a, um, a fire at a school. And their kids at school and they just jump to the conclusion that it might be their school you know oh but oh but that school's only five yards away from my kid's school you know it's got it's the consequence is probably very very little for their their child but all that's coming out of their mouth is things that are you know about their concern and their worry about that that can be an unhealthy earth element kind of person um they could become an overbearing person so that you can kind of see where this is going. So a person in a healthy state like look, likes to look after other people, um, likes to nurture and mother people, and that's a good, healthy aspect of earth. But in an unhealthy sense, it's like clucking over them and not giving them any space, overbearing, um, meddlesome, getting in the business too, way too much. Um, get out of my business. <laughs> so... In a collapsed sense, this means like there's not enough, um, there's not enough power of Earth. So this person should have Earth, Earth as their powerhouse, but there's not enough there, right? Um, so they can become um, instead of nurturing, they could become like spoiling, like that. That behavior is like um, feeling a need to give gifts all the time. Could be can be part of this, right? A person that. Um, they, they want to be liked, they want to, to, and they know that that works because they've, that's one of their powers, right? That's one of their things. So like, um, you know, it's a powerful thing to be a person that gives generously, but a person that can just doesn't let up on that can, can be an unhealthy thing. So let's say you've got a friend and every time you see them, they bring a gift for you. And it can, it can get a little bit weird after a while, right? I'm not talking about a stalker or someone who's trying to stalk you, but like I've known people like this and it's like a compulsion that they can't stop doing that. Um, they could become very clingy, right? So it's good for them to be social and in a healthy sense, they'd be, they like, they get energized by the company of other people. So that, that in that way, I'm thinking they're more of an extroverted person in the Myers-Briggs types than an introverted person. Like introverted people tend to like their own company and they get energized by just being around themselves and being away from others. Whereas earth type of people would get energized by being around others. But in this situation, if there wasn't enough earth, like they, they, they need other people so much. And so they're just, they'll never leave your house. They just hang around like a Klingon kind of hanging around all the time. Or, you know, they call up too much. They just become super reliant or maybe they've blown a lot of other relationships and they've only got a few relationships left. And so those ones, they're kind of drawing and drawing and because they need, they need that. So that person like is clinging on to different relationships, right? Um, and they can become too attached to people in that sense. Like they become like they need they're needy, clingy and needy, and you know too, way too attached to certain people, right? It's just you know they're like they'll call you, oh, what are you doing this weekend? What are you doing? And then you hang out with them that time, and then they're like, um, oh, what are you doing on Monday? Oh, would you like to do <laughs> like can you? And Jerry, may I come in? What do you want? Huh? Nothing. And that, especially if that other person isn't one of those types that is a sociable type. If they're a fire or an earth type, they might not mind it. But if they're another type, they might be like, well, I need my own space. Like, we've just had our time together. Like, wasn't that enough for you? Um, and so in a relationship, it could be like, a like especially if you're getting to know someone. Um, and there's different types that are almost like like I said they're energized by their own company and so they don't need to be around other people all the time to feel um, good or to feel a sense of even validation so a person who's an earth element type who's an undernourished earth they 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 seeking relationship they wouldn't like to be alone they wouldn't like to be single let's say even 
And once they find another partner or they find someone who's got an interest in them, they're kind of like, um, they, they, that, that, that fear of rejection. So they'll probably be like, what are you doing, you know, next week? And five days, like they need to kind of have that sense of, they wouldn't be able to kind of let go and let that person then come to them. They're just like, I need to know that you valid, you value me and I want to, you know, <laughs> I want to be, um, <laughs> I want to be around you all the time and I want to know, like they might be uh, cu not curious, but um, you know, worried or anxious that that person's oh, are they seeing somebody else if they're not seeing me? Like, you know, that kind of thing. In a healthy sense, an earth element person tends to have a good orientation of life. Like they they generally know where they're going, even though they might not express it, you know, very clearly to others. They would be that agreeable person, but you know, they still are very orientated. Where whereas um, a person who's unhealthy in earth is easily gets wishy washy. Right, like thinking of this thing one day, uh, expressing something else the next, like not not sure. And so that can be very discombobulating for an earth person who naturally will be agreeable, but in a healthy way, they still know what they want in life. They're still going somewhere. Um, or they still feel that they're achieving their purpose. Their purpose might be to help others and to be that nurturing person, right? They don't have to necessarily have this kind of steamrolling drive like other types, you know, going to kind of do that. But to not have that at all, not to have any drive or any purpose means that they would vacillate very easily between different ideas and become seemingly very wishy-washy and that just can be discombobulating for them. Um, so they might become overly attached and also like scattered in their thinking. Um, you know, so like it can be, can be a sense of worried but also just like, you know, scatterbrain, like no... No grounding, because Earth is the grounding, and if they lose that grounding, then it kind of can feel like scattering all over the place. So in a healthy sense, an Earth element person is kind of like the, the person within the group, so it might be in a family identity or, you know, within their workplace or group of friends or in a relationship or something like that, that, you know, they're known as that support, a supportive, nourishing kind of person. Um, but in that uh, deficient state, a person who's meant to be doing that, but there's not enough earth, um, you know, they just wouldn't be able to provide that that nurturement because they've, they're, they're, they become so kind of needy themselves. And so there's not enough resource in their body, in their, in their physical body or their, you know, mental body to kind of provide that to other people. So they still want to hang around a lot of people, but then <clears throat> they don't become a benefit to those people as much as they were. In it, or much as they would be in a healthy state, if that makes sense. So what are some things that Earth people have difficulty with or are challenges for Earth people? Well, one is um, change, right? These people typically are resistant to change. They are less... They the, Even though they have... Um, uh, even though they have an agreeable nature, they don't like change. And they're certainly not change drivers like maybe the wood type and the uh, water type would be able to facilitate change, like direct change and say, hey, we need to, they'd be uncomfortable with things being the same. Whereas an earth person, if they're just left to their own devices, they'd just be happy to kind of stay the same. They'd be very happy to kind of stay in that place. Um, they can struggle with feeling disorientated. I think that's probably because of that agreeableness and they're less likely as a personality type to articulate their own desire. And so just imagine that group of friends again going out for coffee or going out to places to eat. And if they're constantly not able to express their desire, then their friends and they, or their, the people they're around aren't able to help fulfill that desire because they just simply don't know. And they might express it at the point where it's like disgruntlement, like they, oh, like the vegetarian person, it's like, why did we come to the ribs and burgers? I don't eat any of these. And everyone's like, well, why didn't you tell us at the start, John? <laughs> He's like, oh, I don't know. I just wanted everyone to be happy. I wanted to go where you, I thought I'd be happy wherever you go. Um, so, like, that can be a, a problem, right? And, and that leads to the next point of, like, self-sacrifice. So they tend to sacrifice their own desires and they maybe get to a point in life where they just become disgruntled because of that. Because they haven't, it's not because... Um, people are treading all over them on purpose. It's because they 
have lost the ability to kind of articulate that in, in themselves or they don't have a very good ar ability to articulate that. They might need help with that. Um, they might be not as efficient as other types, so might have difficulty with procrastination. Part of the worry and the pensiveness is these thoughts that go nowhere, right? And I find looking at students um, a lot, procrastination is one of the biggest things people complain of, right? How do I get, how do I stop procrastination? <clears throat> I deal with lots of Chinese medicine students, but not, not just those students, any students, right? <laughs> no matter what you're studying, there's always like distractions and things like that. And if a person is uh, not as driven, like an earth type of person isn't as driven. And so they might say yes to things that encroach upon their time because to please other people, um, you know, someone knocks on your door and says, hey, I'm not doing well. Can you help me? Or they call up and you spend time and that, that takes out chunks of time. Or, you know, they would be like, I want to go to an event with my friends instead of studying or instead of, you know, working on my business or whatever they've got to kind of do. Um, and that could be at the detriment of them personally, right? So that self self sacrifice can kind of come into it. And, they, and sometimes that can lead to the earth type of people becoming, becoming disillusioned. Like, how did I get here? It's not very clear to them that they had that path of, you know, not, not making time or prioritizing is probably the best word. Like they're less likely to prioritize themselves in the grand scheme of things. Um, and partly that's not their fault. It's the fault. It's, it, it's, and it's not a bad thing. It's just this type of person feels a m much more fulfillment by helping others than they do by themselves. Um, you know, and every type has goods and bads. <laughs> every type has um, positives and negatives. And, you know, if it wasn't for people in this type, you know, you wouldn't have the peacemaker people in the world. You wouldn't have people that are, like there are situations where you really need that self sacrifice um, to, to, for the good of humanity. Right. Um, yeah. So another part, the thing that earth element types can struggle with, and this is even people that are healthy earth types could be a sense of identity. Um, who am I really? Am I the, am I the fulfillment of other people's happiness or am, or am I, am I myself? Like, what am I? Who am I and where am I going? And <laughs> those internal questions we probably all ask. Um, concentration can be a big one, right, for earth element types, especially when it gets out of balance. Part of the, the physiology of an earth element type can be becoming overweight and becoming fluid retentive. And there's a big relationship in Chinese medicine between wood and earth. Now, this video is more just about the personality types, but I have got some other videos about wood and earth um, for different conditions, like looking at things like anxiety, how does that play a role in that? I've got a really good one on the thyroid, if you're interested in that. And that kind of talks about that interrelationship between wood, um, earth, water, and a little bit of fire, and how those elements kind of interrelate in, the, in those hormonal issues. So, um, like, if it becomes out of balance physically, then it's easy for emotions to come out of balance for any of these elements. And the same as with um, the with the emotional stuff, like some people can get into the state of out of balance because of like too much worry, too much pensiveness. And like I mentioned the study thing, because like that's what strains your earth element the most, right? Studying consumes more earth energy than it consumes up other energy because it's thinking, because you're trying to commit things to memory. You're trying to, especially when you're studying something that requires you to think through problems, not just rote memorize it, but understand it, like come to a sense of understanding well, you're using your earth element to kind of do that. So in summary, the earth element type of person likes to be involved in other people's lives. They like to be a needed person. They're generally a sociable person. They'd be a well-liked person if they're, if they're in a healthy state. If they're in an unhealthy state, they might be seen as a meddlesome person or a person that just won't get out of your business. <laughs> Why won't they leave me alone? Stop interfering, right? Um, they tend to like to be they, they can like to be in charge of things um but they don't want to be in the limelight they don't necessarily want um you know the fame and the fabulous prizes and the glory but um you know they then they wouldn't shy away from a leadership position um but they just lead in a different way to um that that then the and and they would easily be um like a likable so as a politician or something like that they'd be they'd easily be liked by other people because they they tend to have 
the politician answer, which is the agreeable answer, right? And that can be frustrating for some types of people because they're like, I just want to know what you really think, not the answer we all want to hear, right? So um, they like to seek harmony and togetherness. They are known as loyal people and they probably wouldn't tolerate anything less. They like loyalty and they'd probably frown upon people that are not loyal because they'd be like, why, you know, why, why aren't you loyal? I've been loyal to you. Um, they like the security the, the, and they tend to be a bit resistant to change. They like predictability, right? They like routine and the sameness of things. So um, if you were dating an earth element type, don't take them on a date and just say, well, yeah, just bring five change of clothes because you don't know where we're going. Like, or to whisk them away on a weekend and not tell them where you're going. They wouldn't like that. They're not, they're probably a little uh, less, not as averse to adventure, I'd say, as a metal type, but um, just a bit of, uh, averse to adventure. Um, and they, they like, you know, they, they don't get bored with the mundane. Let's just put it like that, right? These are people that could easily tolerate a clock punching job, which means like a job where you just do the same thing in and out every day. Um, because they probably get their value for life from the relationships in the workplace, not so much the value of doing the work, right? They feel, would feel like, like when you watch a show like The Office, it's a great example of people that will put up with a, a <laughs> A very mundane job, right? You're selling paper and photocopiers and work supplies kind of thing. Um, and then, but then the, the, what really happens in that show is the relationships and things like that within those people. And you can see some very clear earth element types of people in that show that are like, um, you know, they kind of uh, get their nourishment <laughs> from life out of getting involved in other people's affairs and, you know, being that person that other people come to. So I hope this video has been useful and helpful to you. And if it has, don't forget to leave a like and a comment below. Um, and I look forward to seeing you again on the next video soon.